Hello and welcome to Mission Nonprofit. On Mission Nonprofit, we feature a local nonprofit organization from Thurston County each month. And this month, we have Zonta Club of Olympia. And with me to talk about Zonta Club of Olympia is Lieta Dahlhoff and Linda Zeman. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Mission Nonprofit. And thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that Zonta International, at least, is like, well, even the local chapter, is like one of the oldest nonprofits that I've had on the show. It started in 1928. That's correct. And that's the chapter. It's a chapter in Olympia, yes. Uh -huh. Internationally, but we were uh, founded in 1919 in Buffalo, New York. Okay. What was it like? Do you have? Do you know what it was like uh, when they started up Zonta and why? And I wasn't a charter member back then, <laughs> um, but <I> <laughs> Linda was a charter member. Um, it started with the suffragist movement of empowering women, and so it started by women for women to have to let women have a voice in their community, and it spread like wildfire. So the women who stood up to speak up for those who could not allowed those women to learn how to use their voice, and that's how all the chapters started, spreading across the country from Buffalo, New York, and then internationally. So October 10th, 1928, was when Olympia had a Zonta chapter for the first time. Yes. So what was, it, what was the founding of that chapter like? Do you have any of the information about that back in 1928? We have a, a member of our club, Joyce Gilly, who's been a member for over 50 years. And when we ask her about the history of Zonta Club Olympia, she asks you to picture downtown Olympia, the Capitol Boulevard, where you have all the businesses up and down the road. And all the men were in Rotary. All the women, the wives, were in Zonta Club of Olympia uh -huh. because it was by women for women. And back then, they were addressed as Mrs., your husband's name, they would right. write their business meeting reports that they wore their finest clothes and their pearls and their, and their gloves. Uh -huh. And they were dressed as Mrs. So-and-so, representing their husband. As time went on, they realized they had their own name uh -huh. and their own voice. And the business meeting minutes and their involvement in the community started to change. Where it wasn't representing their husband, they were representing themselves and speaking up for women who didn't have that voice back in that time. So it was an amazing progression of you. We have a lot of historic photos of pancake mixes, of, of rides down the road where Zonta, like 25 cents to donate, to now of how we're advocating and trying to end violence against women in our community. It's, it's amazing how far we've come. Uh -huh. So your main goals are uh, you know, ending violence against women and then um, ending sex trafficking is a big one. Um, are, th are there well. other, you know, ambitions for the club that, you know, you want to carry out? Yeah, with Zonta Club of Olympia, we raise funds in our community to provide uh, money for local nonprofits to improve women's legal, legal rights, mm -hmm. uh, their health, their economic status, their education, to enhance their self-esteem, and also to end violence that mm -hmm. they're experiencing. So it's the full gamut of ways to empower women and girls in our community. Yeah, and I saw on your website, which is, uh, your website is zontaolympia.org. Yes. They can go there if they want to learn more about it, and they didn't hear it enough on this show, they want to <laughs> learn more. They, should, they, check it, they to, should check it out. Or they want to donate. You, That's you got e even donate better, yes. button right there on the website, so zontaolympia.org. But I was reading on there about uh, some of the scholarship programs that you give. So you give money to some of these local organizations that uh, give scholarship to women and girls, right? Yes. That's, that's one of the things. So the YMCA, what are... YWCA. Uh, sorry, y, y, obviously, YWCA. <laughs> what, what other uh, organizations do you offer scholarships through? So we have 12 local nonprofits that we're funding in a two-year cycle. And that includes uh, Child Care Action Council, Monarch Children's Advo Advocacy and Justice Center, uh, Boys and Girls Club, mm -hmm. YWCA, Southside Parent to Parent, Family Support Center, Family Education Support Services, Enterprise for Equity, Washington Engage. I'm and sure. these aren't all scholarships, but it's... it's like grant funding, grants, scholarships. We also have a scholarship through South Butte Sound Community College, mm. our Doris Drees, who's one of our founding members. Uh, not founding, but she's a longtime member, uh, regarding a $1,000 scholarship to help women pursue their education. And Lieta, you're a board member. Yes. Linda, you're a member, but you are also involved in a lot of the events and fun stuff that the club yes. does, right? One so of the fun things I do, I'm a chair for, or the chair for the Tumwater Independence Day Parade. 
and it's just a great way to get involved with our community and show people who we are and what we stand for and get our face out there so people know, hey, Zonta's here and we're here to help. So that's one of the fun things we do. Um, we're also involved in Harbor Days, which I think was an excellent activity for us. Um, that day we gave out 67 knit or crochet kits and they were to knit or crochet hats in the color purple. Um, we partnered with the Family Education Support Services and Jorstad, uh, Yarn, Cre Jorstad Creek Yarn Services. Um, and we gave those out and the purple stands for a time when babies cry the most in their lives. And this is a time when they're most at risk for abuse. So it's a, a good way to get new mothers or mothers who lack support to understand what that time is like in their baby's lives and, and then reduce the risk of abuse. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that about yeah. the color purple. Okay. Being a new uh, upcoming mother, that was really <laughs> exciting for me to do. Yeah. And also a little bit scary, am I right? <laughs> when you're hearing about it. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> Have you been a mother before? I have not. This is oh, my first time. first time. time. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. I'm very excited. <laughs> oh, and then I've also seen your booth at Lake Fair. Yes. Every year you have the German sausage booth. That's right. Delicious food. You can go to Lake Fair and you can buy. And then, then so you, that's a fundraiser for you guys, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, you make money and you raise those funds that you give out to other nonprofit organizations. That's yeah. right. So, uh, and then you had another um, event that you were involved with, uh, the United Way Day of Caring? That was such a great event. We got so much accomplished that day. Um, I was very proud of us, all of us. We partnered with the Women's Leadership Council as well, as well and we did that at uh, Family Support Center in downtown Olympia. We organized rooms, we got donations, we painted walls, we did just so much that day. And um, there was a whole big dry erase board just filled with tasks. And I don't, I think we did most of them, right? Did we? We did all except Windex, the artwork. We didn't <laughs> have time to do that. Yes. <laughs> but we came very close. Yes, and it was just such a great facility to be in and to see what they offer. Um, business clothes for women who are going for interviews or need to go to court for some reason. Um, children's clothes and toys. All kinds of things are there. And it was great to know that it's part of our community and a great place to help. Mm -hmm. When was that at? When did you remember how long ago was that? You know, that was just a few weeks September ago. September 26th. Yeah. 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 So about a month ago, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've got stuff coming up in November, though. You've got uh, the um, 16 Days of Activism, which starts November 25th through December 10th. Yes. This is something the International Club is doing. Yes. Yeah, so there's a lot of information on Zonta.org and also will be on our website. Mm -hmm. And it's 16 Days of Activism to raise awareness to the prevalence that women are experiencing the violence and how to end that. So there's different ways to advocate for or against different topics and also uh, ways to provide service internationally. And so we'll be using social media to raise that awareness and get people a, a call to action. Mm -hmm. And you'll be doing that on your Facebook page? Facebook and Twitter as well. Uh huh. And so what are those addresses? Is uh, I think it was uh, Zonta Club of Olympia yes. is the Facebook. What about the Twitter? Is it the same? Or? You can look up Zonta Club of Olympia and we'll pop right up. Uh huh. Okay. So if you're on those, maybe you could add. Uh, like uh, us. Like follow it. us. That's what do you do? You like the Facebook, and I don't know about the Twitter. You follow. add it. Follow. Follow, follow. follow the Twitter <laughs> and like the Facebook. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, so again, your website zontaolympia.org, and that's a local chapter. But you also that's have zonta.org, which is the national. One. Right. Okay. And you were here at TCTV doing something, doing a little PSA that, um, <laughs> yes. that Linda was in. Yeah. So yeah. why don't we take a look at uh, your little one-minute PSA that you did here at TCTV, and Sounds we'll good. come back and talk more. Let's do it. Okay. Hi, I'm Linda Zeman from Zonta Club of Olympia. We are part of Zonta International, which is a powerful organization creating positive changes in women's lives throughout the world. Right here at home in Olympia, Zonta conducts service projects, advocacy events, and fundraising. We collaborate with nonprofits and work to improve the lives of women and their families in our local community. With funds provided by the Doris Drees Endowment, we offer a scholarship for women pursuing degrees in business at South Puget Sound Community College. In addition, each year Zonta grants funds to local nonprofit organizations. These programs improve women's legal rights, health, education, and economic status. 
We also advocate for ending violence against women and enhancing women's self-esteem. We welcome dedicated and passionate people to join our club and help us impact positive change locally and globally. To learn more, please visit www.zontaolympia.org or check out our Facebook and Twitter to find out how you can make a difference today. Hi, welcome back to Mission Nonprofit. Our guest this month is Zonta Club of Olympia, and I'm talking to Lietta and Linda. Hey, Hello. So I saw you in that video we just watched. <laughs> yeah, I was there <laughs> in all my glory. <laughs> <laughs> but, and you're a member of Zonta Club of Olympia. Why did you decide to become a member, and what is membership like for you there? Um, well, the reason I joined Zonta was actually because my husband and I were new business owners in the area and I was looking for a way to give back. Um, and I was looking for some support from other women who were like-minded and had the same goals and aspirations for our community. Um, and I found that with Zonta. And being part of it, uh, I've made amazing friends and uh, I have a wonderful support circle of women who empower and inspire me every day. They're just great women. And men. And men. And men. And men. So yeah. men are able to join as well, even though it's a, a club started by women in, in, um, about primarily women's issues, but men have that interest as well. Right. So, the thing is, women's issues are men's issues, mm -hmm. and men's issues are women's issues. So if we don't have men along with us, we're not going to get very far. Mm -hmm. And so we have always been open to men as members, and we do have a male member. And so that's one of the things that we're also looking at in our community is to build up diversity of membership, of having men realize that they can be a part and they can have a voice in Zonta Club of Olympia. So tell me about the diversity of the membership of, of Zonta Club of Olympia. And yeah, I dig the diversity. Mm -hmm. So we have over 40 members that range from business owners, to scientists, to website developers, to a senator, to a Thurston County commissioner, to a lobbyist, to a judge, to a diplomat, to an accountant, to a program <laughs> manager, to an IT specialist, <laughs> to, uh, I mean, it goes on and on. It's a myriad of, of women uh -huh. and men. Uh -huh. And so it's great because when I need help with some, oh, we also have a real estate broker, so we know who to go to. So supporting our Zonta sisters and brothers, we know to go to someone in our club to say, hey, can you help me? Because it's a win-win. We're supporting them, we're building up their business, and it just helps the community thrive as well. And we bring all those skill sets together to make Zonta really successful. Um, because, you know, we all have our um, strong suits, right? And we bring that to the table with the different businesses that we're involved in. Um, it just makes Zonta better. Um, and so what is your favorite Zonta experience, Linda? Oh my goodness. Um, it has to be murder, the murder mystery we have every year. It's just so much fun. Um, we collaborate with Open Road Productions and this last year I think was my favorite because I'm a little bit of a, a Trekkie nerd <laughs> and I admit that proudly. <laughs> um, but we had just the most fun, and I'm on that committee, and it does take a lot of work, but we raised a, a really great amount of money to help all of those nonprofits that we helped for that two-year cycle, um, and we brought a lot of awareness, and we all just had a really great time. I dressed up as Dana Troy, and my husband dressed up as Will Riker, and it was just, it was just so much fun. I think every year, year we have a great time. So you do that annually? Yes, the, the every September. Here? Every September. Nice. Okay, mm -hmm. people need to look that up and they need to become members. Do you guys have like monthly meetings or, or something like that where you all get together? We do. We have business meetings the third Thursday okay. at noon. And we have a calendar on zontalipia.org that you can go and see all of our meetings. We have program meetings the first Thursday of the month that you can go and look. They're open to everybody. It's open to all. You don't have to be a member to attend. So if you're interested, drop on by, check us out. Mm -hmm. See what we're up to. So those are all the kind of the, the good news about the club and stuff, but there, there's kind of the dark part, and that's, you know, what you're working toward, and, mm -hmm. and that's reducing the sex trafficking, which a lot of us don't even, you know, doesn't exist. What, what are you talking about, sex trafficking? But it is real, and it's here. Yes. In, in the United States, in Olympia, and um, also the, you know, violence against women, mm -hmm. abuse, that kind of stuff. And 
from the way we talked to break, I found out that these things aren't getting better. They're actually getting worse. Am I right? I think um, where we live is such a wonderful place here in Thurston County. Um, most of us don't see the dark side. We, and a lot of times it's not that we don't necessarily see, it's that we kind of close our eyes to it. That's not happening, not around here, not mm -hmm. where I live, not in this beautiful place. And it is happening. And mm -hmm. we have to keep our ears open and our eyes open and really see what is abuse. Is this person in danger? Is this person at risk? And um, bring awareness to it. Bring attention to it. Use your voice and say, hey, that's not right, and, and let's fix it. And one of the ways we do that is partnering with Washington Engage and Thurston County Coalition Against Trafficking. And another organization founded by Krishita Begum, who's also a member, is ASHO, um, which stands, it's an acronym in her native Bangladesh language. And they're both three amazing organizations that are working to eliminate the exploitation of women and men, girls and boys, in our community. Mm -hmm. So you can go check out those, org uh, those websites to find out more information, but you can also link to our website to see what's happening and how you can get involved. And that's zontaolympia.org, so make sure you look that up if you haven't already, zontaolympia.org. Um, are there any achievements that have been made in regards to, you know, the sex trafficking problem, the domestic violence problem, uh, legislation, things like that? There has been, over the past few years, legislation. Um, there's some amazing senators on the Hill that are using their voice to empower women and men and boys and girls to get out of that cycle of exploitation, trafficking, labor, sex. Um, the challenge is now that we have those laws implemented, how do we enforce those regulations? Mm -hmm. And so that's where it comes to the local authorities, the police officers, the school systems, and getting that next level of engagement and training so they can have their eyes open to what's really happening and then know how to respond. Do you have women that come to your organization with these issues and want to join, become members, or you know, um, are these people that are just kind of supporting victims or maybe they know a victim? We have examples of women who have joined our club and years later opened up to us that they were a survivor of domestic violence and we had no idea. We have members who have come and are very open about their uh, survival mm -hmm. um, from past experiences. Mm -hmm. And I feel that there are still some members who have gone through something and are not ready to share it. Yeah. So there's all types. We don't know everyone's story, but what's amazing is these women are coming forward to share their story mm -hmm. in our club. Do you share with them other resources, send them other places to, to get other help? Because it's probably not you know, your expertise to be kind of the first line of... Right. So we, I like to summarize on the Club of Olympia is that we leverage community dollars to give to local nonprofits that are providing the service. So because of our relationships with the 12 local nonprofits we're supporting in this two-year cycle and past recipients, we are able to direct women and men if they need certain services to mm -hmm. the proper service provider. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you do work with um, the legislators right, in, in, in drafting some of the legislation to reduce sex trafficking, things like that. It's one of the perks of being in Olympia, in Olympia right? that we could just go park and go up there and build that relationship with other legislators and help sponsor, help get the word out, get stories for them, testify. So a lot of mm -hmm. Zonchans over the decades have been able to advocate in that manner. I like that word Zonchins. I saw it on your website. <laughs> and that is a member of, of Zoncha Club. When you join Zoncha, you become a Zonchin. So I if you'd like to be a Zonchin, <laughs> go to their website. <laughs> Our membership application is online. Uh huh. And that's uh, um, zontaolympia.org. So look that up. Yeah. Okay. Um, there was another event we talked about, and that's happening soon, uh, or in the past, whatever time you're watching this show. But <laughs> November 5th, you have. Uh, a tea, uh, what was it called? The, the kinship tea. Um, who wants to tell me more about the kinship tea event? I can talk about that. Okay. So our kinship tea is on November 5th and it is for two families that we support and these families um, are children being raised by their grandparents or their aunts and uncles um, because for some reason or another their parents can no longer be involved in, in the situation in their family. Um, so during this tea, there's a small auction and donations for uh, 
their holiday support time. So when the holidays come up, it's difficult to provide for children and have that traditional meal um, or gifts and things like that. So we want those children to feel special like other children do. And so we give to them at that time. And we have a nice ladies social tea where gentlemen can be gentlemen and ladies can be ladies. <laughs> and we, we eat and enjoy and share our love with the, those two families. And I think it's a great day. So these families that you're helping out with the kinship tea, are they going to be there? That's completely up to them. They're invited. They're more than welcome to come. But at Zonta, we really like to respect the privacy of the people we donate to. Um, a lot of people don't necessarily want the attention of uh, our members, and um, they like to keep it private and just enjoy the holiday together as a family without all the fanfare and um, eyes on them and things like that. So definitely respecting people's privacy is part of what we do at Santa. Do you guys have any goals for the next, I don't know, year, anything like uh, things you, you want to reach? Um, if you want to grow your membership, you want to raise funds, do you have any goals for the next coming year? We do have a strategic plan that's mm -hmm. broken down. One of the things that Lynn and I have been talking about in the past is doing high school and college Zonta clubs. Oh, yeah. There are Z that's clubs and Golden Z clubs and mm -hmm. engaging our youth in our community mm -hmm. to be future Zonchans. Yeah. So that's something that we would like to explore. And we've been talking to YWCA of Olympia and Boys and Girls Club of seeing mm -hmm. what that would look like to partner. So that's one of the goals I would like to see. Mm -hmm. That is so important to me. Um, because I feel like young women, especially, uh, lack the support and the empowerment they need to feel confident to go into the world and say, I'm an amazing person, look at me, I can do this, I can do anything. Um, I feel that they lack that. And even boys, young, young mm -hmm. men, they feel that way too, and I don't think they get that support. But having a Z club in a high school or a middle school or a college Mm -hmm. I feel could give even just that one young woman a real voice, a chance to feel special, to feel empowered. So important. Yeah. yeah. And then you get the scholarships. They go through. Yes. You've, you've got all those going out. And they might go to a club member, a, a, you know, a, a college club member or something like that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It would be great to see our past recipients of our scholarships come back and join Zanta. And we are, mm -hmm. we try and connect with them, but sometimes they end up all across the country, which is great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we've stayed in contact with the past few years recipients, and that's been pretty amazing. And so they come to our events when they can, when they're in town. And what I love about Zonta Club of Olympia is like we have a guilt-free membership. So whatever you can do or not do, there's no pressure, there's right. no stress. We want to tap into your passion, mm -hmm. what you're interested in doing, and finding mm -hmm. that place in Zonta. So if you can't make meetings, if you can't cover the dues, I don't know if there's dues. But We're working on a scholarship to help uh -huh. women and men who would like to join our club but mm -hmm. don't have the disposable income at this time uh -huh. to offer them a scholarship. So that is something in the works. So the dues might bring some of the money in that you, you sent out to uh, some of the other local nonprofits to help women and girls. Actually, our dues do not cover the nonprofits. So our dues That's cover not... um, our international and oh, District 8 are fees. So okay. it's a fees to run uh -huh. the organization. That's why we have fundraisers. So we, we keep our dues as low as we can to mm -hmm. be able to meet the needs of Zonta International and our district. And that's why we raise other funds that go directly to the nonprofits. What she's talking about is being a sustaining club, which means that we take care of ourselves. We don't rely on other people's dollars to take care of our club. We exist because we sustain ourselves and we rely on our community and the support of our members to give back to our community, not to give to us. So when you raise money to give back to the community, mm -hmm. that's done in other ways, in fundraisers, in maybe donors from the website. Can you can you help me out with, uh, how, how is that done? So Where, the, murder that mm -hmm. the murder the mystery. The murder mystery. The Capital Lake Fair. Right, we the, have the, the German sausage teas, And we also are doing uh, different events throughout the year that will target a certain nonprofit, so that money will go directly to that nonprofit, or some of our Zonta International, because we do have Zonta International projects as well. Mm -hmm. So we have local and we have global. So the majority of our funds stay in our community, but up to 30% of our funds will go to Zonta International projects. Mm -hmm. So members can donate individually. They can uh, donate specifically to a scholarship, to a nonprofit. There's a myriad of ways to donate and get involved. So a lot of those fundraisers and uh, campaigns and stuff, they're earmarked for certain 
projects for yes. certain nonprofits. Yes. So people can, you know, they know where their money's going. Exactly. Basically. Excellent. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, I think that's about all the time we have for this episode of Mission Nonprofit. But thank you for joining me here and talking about Zonta Club of Olympia. That website for you is zontaolympia.org. You can also go to Facebook and look up Zonta Club of Olympia or on Twitter and follow and like. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Robert. Thanks for being on the show, and we will see you next month. Thanks for watching. If you know of a local nonprofit organization that's making a difference in our community, give us a call at 956-3100, extension 103, or send an email to rkam at tctv.net.